Hi guys, thank you for tuning in. Um, so I decided to make a chapter uh, six study guide video for the test tomorrow. So if you are confused, thank you for uh, watching this video. All right, question number one, we have to solve the system by graphing. So you need to graph it in class. A lot of students were just going ahead and using uh, substitution or elimination, right? On the test, I need to see our lines graphed and then the point meaning. All right, so going ahead and graphing this one at a time, right? Just look at it one at a time. We know we need to graph our y-intercept first. This is our y-intercept of negative three. So our y-intercept of negative three is right there. And then we go ahead and use our slope of three over five to go ahead and graph our other points, right? Up three, rise over run. Slope is rise over run. So we go up three across five, up three, across five. All right, we go ahead and connect those dots together. So let me just turn it to the side. Okay. All right, the next line, we have our um, equation of y is equal to 2x plus 4. We make that a fraction by putting it over 1. So our equation here is, uh, sorry, our y-intercept here is four. All right, so basically we have to go up to across one, right? Using our slope, we go up to across one, up to across one. But remember, our goal is to find where these two lines intersect. So we have to go the other way. So instead of going up to across one, if we go down to and um, to the left one, Hopefully you can see that that lines up with exactly our graph. It's the same thing, right? Down two and then across one is the same thing. Uh, so it's a positive slope, right? It's on that same line that we just created. So we have to go ahead and keep on following that pattern until we get to the place where it intersects down two across one. And remember, we need the exact point. So let's just go ahead and um i don't think this is going to give us exact point because we just sort of eyeballed it so let's go ahead and let's see on this one we're going to go across five and then down three across five sorry down three and then to the left five that's going to be right there down three to the left five. Yeah, and notice that is exactly where our graph, or if we have this line continuing, right? So yeah, that is the point where our two lines intersect, right at that point there. All right, so our final answer is that coordinate point, right? That coordinate point is negative five comma negative six. So yeah, negative five comma negative six. All right, question number two, same thing, except now we have an equation not in slope intercept form. Remember, we need it in slope intercept form in order to graph it. So we have to go ahead and subtract three X from both sides, minus three X, and minus 3x. So minus 3x from both sides, we get y is equal to negative 3x plus 4. All right, so now we go ahead and graph it. Right, y is equal to 4x minus 3. That's going to be a negative 3 right there. That is our y-intercept. And our slope is 4 over 1. So we go up 4, across 1. 1, 2, 3, 4, across 1. One, two, three, four across one. All right, so let's just hold off for a bit on, on uh, connecting those lines because as we saw last time, um, sometimes you may not get exactly where they cross. Uh, so we'll hold off on that. So that's that line. And the other line is going to be uh, y is equal to negative 3x plus 4. So once again, to make that a fraction, we can just put it over 1. We go ahead and graph our y-intercept at positive four. And then we go ahead and use our slope of negative three over one. So that negative three, remember that negative three says to go down three and then across one. 
So notice how that is going to be our answer right there, right? Because that's where our lines inter, uh, intersect. So let's just go ahead and keep on following that pattern down three across one so we, or, so we can get one more line, or sorry, one more point. So we go ahead and connect those dots. And then we go ahead and connect these dots. And then, yeah, our answer, as I just said, is where that point or, or that point or that line, uh, sorry, that point where the lines intersect. One comma one. All right, question number three, same thing, right? We already have one line in slope-intercept form. We want to put this also in slope-intercept form. So we have to go ahead and subtract 2x from both sides. We have negative 6y. Negative 6y is equal to negative 2x minus 24. Divide both sides by negative 6. We get y is equal to... So negative over negative, that makes it a positive. 2 over 6, we can simplify that to be 1 third x, and then plus 4. All right, so let's go ahead and think of these lines. y is equal to 1 third x minus 1. So graph our y-intercept first. And then we go up 1 across 3, up 1 across 3. All right, we go ahead and connect those lines. All right, then we look at this other one. We have 1 third x plus 4. So going ahead and graphing our y-intercept of positive 4. And then we go ahead and use our slope of 1 third. So we go up 1 across 3. And then up one across three. All right, so we have our line. We go ahead and connect that line or those dots. So basically, these lines are going to be parallel. How do we know they're going to be parallel? If we remember from chapter five, parallel lines have the same slope. Same slope. Parallel lines have the same slope. All right, so our answer here, right, usually we want to write our answer as an ordered pair, but we're not going to have an ordered pair, right, because our lines don't intersect. So we say no solution, no solution. All right, question number five, solve the system by substitution. Remember, we want to substitute. We want to substitute 5x minus 7 into this y. Right, so if you got forgot how to do that, 2x plus 3, and then we write what y is equal to. Literally, that's going to be 5x minus 27, which is going to be equal to 4. And then we go ahead and solve as we learned or as we know how to do in chapter 2. Right, We go ahead and distribute that 3. That gives us 2x plus 15x. Uh, shoot, 3 times negative 27, that's going to be uh, negative 81. Wow, negative 81. Uh, 5x minus 27, yeah, negative 81, which is equal to 4. All right, so combining like terms, we get 17x minus 81 is equal to 4. And then we go ahead and add 81 to both sides. We are left with 17x is equal to, right, those cancel out, is equal to 85. Dividing both sides by 17, we get x is equal to 5. All right, so remember with systems of equations, that is not our final answer. We have to go ahead and find our y variable. So how do we do that? We plug our x back into any one of these equations, the easiest one would be that second one. So we plug in y, or sorry, x is equal to 5. So 5 
we are going to replace our x with 5. And then we subtract 27. All right, so 25 minus 7, that gives us y is equal to negative 2. So that's our x, that's our y. Our final answer is in ordered pair form. So we write 5 comma negative 2, 5 comma negative 2. Question number 5, we want to solve the system by elimination. So remember, elimination, we want to eliminate one of these variables. We can eliminate it by multiplying that top, multi, uh, top equation by negative 3. If you don't see why, I'll explain it soon once we multiply each side by negative 3. So negative 3 times x gives us negative 3x. Negative 3 times negative 3y gives us plus 9y. And then that's going to be equal to uh, 39. All right, let's just rewrite that second equation to keep our work more organized. Uh, let's see, we have 3x plus 7y is equal to 25. All right, so I was talking about why did we want to multiply that by negative 3. Well, we multiply it by negative 3 so that when we add these two equations together, the x variable gets eliminated, right? Negative 3x plus 3x gives us 0, right? So those cancel out, and we are left with 16y is equal to 64. Dividing both sides by 16, we get y is equal to 4. All right, once again, we have our y. Now we need to find our x. We find our x by plugging it into any one of those equations. I think uh, the bottom equation, probably the easiest way. So 3x plus 7 times y, which is 4, right? Plugging in y is equal to 4 into there, is equal to 25. All right, so 3x plus 28 is equal to 25. Then we go ahead and subtract 28 from both sides. We get 3x is equal to negative 3. Dividing both sides by 3, we get x is equal to negative 1. All right, so our final answer as an ordered pair is negative 1, comma, 4. All right, question number six said solve the system using any method. So using any method, right? So we have to think about this strategically. Which method do we want to use, elimination or substitution? I think substitution is the easiest one because we can just go ahead and substitute this y or this negative x minus 9. They tell us it's equal to y into this right there, right? Or you could do it the other way around. But either way, you should get something very similar to this. All right, so we want to solve for x, right? So let's go ahead and add x to both sides. That way we can have x just on one side of our equation. That gives us negative 9, which is equal to 3x plus 3. I subtract 3 from both sides. I'm left with 3x, right? These cancel out, is equal to negative 12. Dividing both sides by 3, I get x is equal to negative 4. All right, so that's my x. Now I can find my y by just plugging it into any of these. So I'm just going to use this since it's uh, less negatives. So y is equal to 2 multiplied by negative 4, right? Just replacing x with negative 4 plus 3. Simplifying that, that's going to be negative 8 plus 5. Once again, if you can't do that in your head, just use a calculator. But just from doing a bunch of math, I know that it's negative 3. All right, so final answer, negative 4, comma, negative 3. 
All right, question number seven, solve the system using any method. Once again, we want to think about this strategically, right? We don't have any uh, variables solved for y or, or x. So look at this. These x's are lined up. These y's are lined up. I know that I could just go ahead and use elimination to go ahead and eliminate one of these variables. Um, so you can do it two ways. Um, let's just go ahead and multiply each of these by a negative one. Right, so uh, I'll talk about why I'm doing that later, but x plus 4y is equal to 19. So I'm just rewriting that top equation. And then I'm going to multiply the bottom by negative 1. So negative x plus 2y is equal to uh, negative 1. So you could have multiplied the top by negative 1. doesn't matter, but I just did the bottom one. All right, so those x's cancel out. We are left with 6y is equal to 18, right? We're adding these together. 19 plus a negative 1 gives us 18. All right, dividing both sides by 6, we get y is equal to 3. All right, so we solved for y. Now we want to solve for x. So we just go ahead and plug in to our equation. Let's just go ahead and use this top one since there's no negatives in there. So x plus 4 times y, which is 3, is equal to 19. 4 times 3 is just 12, so x plus 12 is equal to 19. Subtracting 12 from both sides, those cancel out. We get x is equal to 7. All right, our final answer, 7, 3, 7, 3, final answer. All right, question number eight. Solve the system using any method. All right, once again, we need to think about how to get, um, how to eliminate one of these variables. So if you look at my sheet in class, I told you guys to multiply the top by negative five, the bottom by two, right? Because in my mind, I'm thinking I want to get this to be negative 10 and this to be 10, right? Negative 10x plus 10x, those cancel out and we are just left with uh, no x variable. All right, so let's go ahead and do that. Um, so negative 10x minus 40y is equal to negative 30. On the bottom, multiplying both sides by 2, we have 10x plus 40y is equal to 30. All right, so exactly what we wanted to happen, right? We wanted these x's to cancel out. But something strange happens as well, too. These y's cancel out as well, too, right? Negative 40y plus 40y, those cancel out. So on the left-hand side, we have 0. On the right-hand side, we also have 0. Negative 30 plus 30, that gives us 0. All right, so remember, guys, whenever you have no variable left in your equation, and you just have a number equaling that same number, we always say that's always going to be true, right? So when it's always true, we write infinitely many solutions, or IMS, infinitely many solutions. All right, question number nine, solve the system using any method. Once again, we don't have a variable solved for, right? But these X's and Y's line up, so I think elimination is a good uh, strategy. So let's go ahead and multiply this by 2, and then that side by 2, right? This whole equation by 2. Because if we multiply this by 2, that's going to become negative 8x. Negative 8x plus 8x, that would cancel out our x variable, or it would eliminate it, right? So let's go ahead and do that. That will give us negative 8x uh, multiplied by 2. So that's just going to be plus 6y is equal to negative 12. All right, then let's just go ahead and rewrite this equation. We have 8x minus 6y is equal to negative 30. All right, then once again, our negative 8x and our 8x cancels out. And that same strange thing happens. The 6y and this negative 6y cancels out again. And then lastly, uh, so on the left-hand side, we're just left with 0. On the right-hand side, negative 12 plus a negative 30. 
that gives us negative 42. So negative 42. So this time we don't have any variables left, but we have a number equaling a different number. That's never going to be true, right? So since it's never true, we say no solution. No solution. Never true. All right, question number 10. We want to solve the system using any method. Uh, I think uh, the easiest method right here, we already have y solved for, is going to be um, substitution. Right, so substitute this y into this y. Right, we know y is equal to negative 7x minus 8. Let's just go ahead and plug that in. So 2 multiplied by x plus 5 times this, right, negative 7x minus 8. And that's going to be equal to negative 7. Right, we go ahead and distribute that 5 first. We bring down the 2x. Uh, 5 times negative 7x, that's going to be minus 35x. 5 times the negative 8 is going to be minus 40. And that's going to be equal to negative 7. All right, combining like terms, we subtract 2x minus 35x. That gives us negative 33x. Minus 40 is equal to negative 7. We go ahead and add 40 to both sides. I'm just going to continue up here. Right On the left-hand side, those two things cancel out. So on the left-hand side, we have negative 33x is equal to positive 33. Right? Negative 7 plus 40 gives us positive 33. Divide both sides by negative 33. We get x is equal to negative 1. x is equal to negative 1. All right, then plugging this into here, I think the, the bottom equation is the easiest. So let's see, uh, where can we put it? I'm just going to write it over here. This is uh, y is equal to negative 7 multiplied by negative 1 minus 8. All right, negative 7 times negative 1, that gives us positive 7, right, positive 7. So y is equal to positive 7 minus 8. And, of course, you guys know then y is equal to negative 1. All right, so putting that together, our final answer for number 10, final answer for number 10 is going to be negative 1, comma, negative 1. That is our final answer. All right, then lastly, question number 11. Determine if the point negative 9, comma, 5 is a solution to the following system. All right, so as you guys know, this has to make both, has to make both equations true. So we have to go ahead and plug in negative 9 and 5 into each of these equations, and our equations or our sides should be equal. So let's go ahead and do that. x is equal to negative 9, so we write negative 9. y is equal to 5, so we write minus 3 times 5. And then hopefully, we don't know that it is, let's write a question mark for now, that's equal to negative 24. So let's go ahead and do some math. Remember, we have to multiply first. So uh, let's see, 3 times 5 is 15, so negative 9 minus 15. Is that equal to negative 24? Well, yeah, we know it's going to be equal to negative 24, or if you want to plug it into your calculator, we know that's going to be true. All right, so once again, we need both equations to be true, though. So we need to plug it into both equations, right, not just the top one. So let's go ahead and plug it into this one. Uh, 5 multiplied by negative 9, once again, our, our x is equal to negative 9, plus 8 times 5 is hopefully, we're going to write a question mark there, hopefully it's equal to negative 5. All right, negative 9 times 5, that gives us negative 45. 8 times 5 is plus 40, and then hopefully that's equal to negative 5. Well, yeah, 
put that in a calculator or just from doing mental math, I know that negative 45 plus 40 is equal to negative 5. So both equations are true. So determine if the point negative 9 comma 5 is a solution. Final answer, we just say yes. It's a solution. All right, guys, thank you for watching, and I will see you tomorrow. Or if you're watching this tomorrow morning, I will see you this afternoon.